welcome now to our big auditorium. And what we want to do now really is to give each of you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Uh, so both, you know, your name, the company you're working in, uh, what you're working on you know, in terms of fintech, wealth tech, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an investor, if you work for a large bank, an asset manager. So tell us what you're working on and also tell us whom you like to work with. Uh, because most likely you've got those people here in the room because we've got our whole stakeholder, our whole ecosystem here in this room. So tell us whom you like to work with so that we know who in the audience can help you, you know, and, and, and work. we can all work together. So that's um, what we want to do now. And also, again, remind us where you come from, because I think it's so incredible how many countries we've got represented today, you know, from so far away. Uh, everybody's here to celebrate the book launch. And what I should say is congratulations to all of you, because the Wealth Tech book, you know, when we launched it a year ago, it was the term Wealth Tech was not really known at that stage. It was really an unknown term. And... Uh, and also, we didn't know how many authors, how many experts there were, you know, who could write sensible, intelligent chapters on this topic because it was so new. And then when we launched, you know, we had more than 240 applications to participate in the book. And you are the best 70, 75, 80 people we chose, you know, to write chapters in the book. And, uh, and then, you know, after you wrote the chapters and after you submitted them, Thomas and I, so that's Thomas, you know, our editor and I, we then went to edit them all. And I must say, some of you have written perfect chapters, so we didn't have to edit much. You know, others we had to edit more. So it was <laughs> a combination of, of, of things. And our goal, of course, Thomas and I, we tried to find a common theme. You know, we tried that the book tells a story from the beginning to the end that the chapters build upon each other. So sometimes we wrote, we kind of moved articles and chapters to a different part, just to make sure that the whole book, you know, tells a consistent, a consistent story. And, uh, and then it went to Wiley, you know, Wiley, our publisher, and, uh, and I tell you already now, we'll say this again in the evening, uh, but basically we're doing very well. I spoke to our editor uh, just last week on Friday, and we have sold almost 1,300 copies, you know, within the first month. And that's just here in Europe, because the book is not yet available in the States. And uh, hopefully will be very soon, because there's a huge waiting list, you know, in, in the States, in Canada. Um, and so far, the book really is just available here in, in London. And here in the UK, please come inside. Please take a seat, yes. Uh, and, and here, you know, in the UK, um, when we went to Amazon, we always checked literally almost every day the Amazon bestseller lists because we wanted to see if our book manages like the Fintech book, you know, which was our first book to move up the bestseller ranking. And I remember the first day I looked at it, it was like play 64. I thought, oh no, it is not as early days, you know, we want to get higher. And then a week later we went up to 30. And then the best one which we achieved is number two, you know, on the Amazon bestseller list, which means all of you are authors of a best-selling book. Uh, so congratulations to that because it's an amazing achievement. You can be all be very proud of it. Um, what I would like to do now is to hand over to each of you. So what we do is I literally start out in the first row and we go each person by person, you know, introducing yourselves. And maybe what I do, I do the same. You know, I mean, you know me, Suzanne Chisti, as co-editor of the Wealth Tech book. Uh, in addition, I'm also the founder of Fintech Circle, as you know. And Fintech Circle, we do three things. On one side is we invest in Fintech startups. So we have got our, our own Fintech fintech angel network where we invest in early stage fintech companies please take a seat we've got yes just take a seat we've got a few lots of places here um, so our you know our our goal is to identify the best fintech companies who raise money almost for the first time and we are about 100 investors here in london cambridge oxford and all of us are angel investors so we all you know identify and our goal is to find the best fintech companies to back with smart capital 
and that's one part of our business. The second part is education, where we launched together with many of you the FinTech Circle Institute just half a year ago with Stephen as well, was here from Canada. So we had launched the FinTech Circle Institute where we, where we offer courses, online courses to people all over the world who want to learn about fintech, wealth tech, blockchain, you know, rec tech. And we have got these online courses on our fintech Circle Institute website. And we also offer those courses in person. So we have partnerships in place with uh, the United Arab Emirates, for example, Abu Dhabi Global Markets, where Abu Dhabi Global Markets is like the FCA equivalent, you know, in the UAE. And their goal is to make the UAE less dependent on oil. You know, they want to be less on oil, less on gas. And so they want to become a knowledge-based economy and finance is a huge area of growth for them. So if anybody of you is interested in the Middle East, in Abu Dhabi, definitely let me know because I, I know lots of people there and I can help you to find your network, you know, in, in the UAE. And the second thing of our focus is China. You know, China is a key area of focus. I've spoken to David Zilling uh, and uh, the association in Sichuan. And I have been several times in China. The first time was when I was in Hong Kong, when I worked for Morgan Stanley Asset Management. For seven years, six years, I worked in London, one year in Hong Kong. And, um, and then I came back again half a year later, half a year ago, I went to China, to Chengdu, to Beijing, to Hangzhou, and I was just blown away, you know, what happens in China. So for those of you, again, who are interested in the Chinese market, definitely come and speak to us, speak to Ziling, because we are planning, you know, a, a big conference, which is called the Fintech Bridge Conference, uh, later this year between China and the UK and Europe as well. So that's, I guess, in summary, what we do, I guess, the last thing what we do is we also advise banks on fintech innovation strategies and we work with banks uh, to help them develop internal accelerator programs. So any startups who wants to work for or sell to a bank, you know, B2B uh, companies, again, let me know because often we get requested by, by asset managers, by banks, you know, who are the best fintech companies you can introduce to us. So we can also help here. So that's a quick summary of, of what I do. And I like to welcome you all to be here. Now let's introduce each of you. So maybe if we start with you, please. Come to the front, Thank you. Please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> it's great to start because my chapter is the final chapter. So in writing, I am the last, but in speaking, I am the first. So first of all, I want to say thank you to Suzanne and Thomas. I think it means a lot that uh, I am involved in this project. I think this book will evolve into becoming a very, very important uh, book. Many bad, problematic, ambivalent things are happening in the world. Wealth tech is a very good thing happening in the world. Um, my primary activity is giving training to bankers about fintech, financial technology, about innovation, about digital transition. And it's absolutely global. There is stunning, huge demand for this. So ev ev almost every week I sit with 10, 20, 30, 40 bankers from Vietnam to Egypt, from uh, China to Kuwait, from Abu Dhabi uh, to Denmark. Uh, and we talk about fintech. And uh, one of the most most important uh, topics within fintech, not the only one, but one of the most important topics is wealth tech. How to, how to serve the next generation, the millennials, the millennials, the people who became adults in the new millennium. And uh, basically, my chapter is about the future of fintech, so how these people could really be served. And uh, I could talk much, much more, but I think I have used my two minutes. So come to me uh, uh, if you want training about fintech. Thank you very much. Uh, 
very happy to here to be here today in London, UK. And thank you all. Thank you, Susan Chishti, and thank to all the other co-authors for the peer reviewing for my article and everybody else's article. So uh, I I'm come from China. In uh, the company name is called Zongfin China. Uh, it's a fintech group dealing with payments, uh, P2P online lending, and robot advisory, all these kind of things. Uh, but today, I am representing Sichuan Association of Fintech. It's an association built, uh, supervised by the Sichuan provincial government. Uh, it's a connection between government, research, and business. If anyone wants to develop his business in China, please come to me and I will think about opening a gate for you. <laughs> Let's do it together. So uh, my article in this book is called Issuance and Investment of Financial, uh, financial Instruments Distributed in Blockchain in Chapter 5. I think many of us are thinking about a global blockchain network, but today we have not reached that step except for a Bitcoin or Ethereum. We are building our consortium chain. So I would like to take this opportunity to make a proposal that we can build a consortium of people together and we shall make our work towards that target uh, under the help of the FinTech Circle. Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Effie Pilarino. I am uh, Greek. I come, I, I, I'm trying to be exotic, uh, right? <laughs> after, after China, I come um, from a Greek island, uh, but I have spent all my career abroad. I've been living in Switzerland for the past five years and focused on fintech. Um, with uh, my partner Bernard Lunn, we co-founded Daily Fintech, which is an insight-driven content platform. And um, we practice on a daily basis writing and sharing our thoughts about the innovation and the trends in the fintech space. I personally have always focused on innovation in uh, capital markets, wealth and asset management, simply because of my Wall Street uh, uh, background and, uh, and uh, work um, in um, investment uh, management and hedge fund industry. And through that work, of course, blockchain has come in since um, its first use cases has been in uh, capital uh, markets. So in terms of uh, business, I advise a few uh, companies. Um, it's uh, either fintechs that I help them in their strategic business development and in um, leading them into partnerships with incumbents or other uh, fintechs. And uh, lately I've also been working with a few blockchain ventures that are really fintechs that want to integrate their business model onto blockchain. So I'm helping them establish a separate uh, entity, a separate business and have it run parallel to their existing fintech uh, business. So come and talk to me if uh, you think that there's a B2B proposition that needs um, thought leadership, that needs international uh, networking, and I can uh, add value uh, to that. Um, come and talk to me about uh, blockchain. I'm um, very much um, into thinking about these issues. I'm also uh, planning to write a book that is uh, less technical and more of a manifesto, and you'll be hearing about it uh, more. And please, you know, link uh, through LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, subscribe to Daily Fintech, it's open and free. Uh, and, and the invitation is more of sharing thoughts 
and hearing from all of you uh, your different uh, points of view because the space is growing so much in terms of uh, uh, geography, trends and so on that we, we all need to, to work together to get uh, the best out of it. So, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, my name is Kamlesh, um, Kamlesh Lardi, and I am originally Malaysian. I've been working and living in Switzerland for the past 15 years. I have about 18 years of experience in consultancies like Deloitte and Accenture. And the last six years, I've been running my own consulting firm in Zurich. And um, basically, we specialize in developing digital strategies, so helping large organizations like uh, big banks, pharmaceutical companies understand the disruptive impact of digital technologies, emerging technologies, and helping them design uh, their digital strategy roadmap and uh, also business model innovation for new technology implementation. So I do things like um, helping companies understand how blockchain can impact their business and what their business should look like with a decentralized mod uh, model in the next five or 10 years, things like that. Um, I am also um, a mentor with the F10, which is a Swiss um, stock exchange accelerator program. So I do mentor startups in the fintech space. And um, we basically support startups that are looking to develop their value propositions and either enter the market, um, access new customer base, or expand their business further. Um, I'm also one of the lecturers in the FinTech Circle um, Institute, and the module I present there is business model innovation in financial services. So um, if you guys have an interest around developing new business models with um, basically emerging technology, or if you have an interest in um, basically designing a digital strategy or designing a roadmap for implementation, I would be the person to speak to. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I just flew in from Tokyo, Japan yesterday, so I got jet lagged a little bit. Um, so <laughs> I'm here to represent maybe, I guess, Japanese fintech company. I'm running the company called Cloud Realty. Uh, we run the first peer-to-peer -peer equity real estate crowdfunding platform based in Japan. Um, we also have subsidiary in Estonia, so we invest in Estonia as well. And um, as we try to get the distributed financial system um, based, in, based of Japan, we are working on blockchain, crypto, current, uh, currency stuff in Japan. Um, we also are one of the board, board members of Japanese fintech associations. So we, we work with uh, Ministry of Finance in Japan. We set the rules for ICOs and cryptocurrency and stuff. Um, but uh, we're trying to solve the issue. I, I wrote about it in the book, but uh, Japanese people are not good at asset management. Um, as you can see, <laughs> so you know, that's why people invest so much money in crypto and stuff. I mean, in bitcoins, for example. Um, so if you see the personal portfolio of Japanese people, uh, we always have 50, more than 50% of cash. So there's nine trillion dollars uh, sitting in bank accounts in Japan. So we try to liquidate the money. Um, for example, compared to the states, only 10% of cash they, they keep in their balance sheet. Um, in Europe, I guess 20 to 30 percent, but in Japan more than 50 percent. So it's crazy, and you know, and all the uh, low interest, um, all these economic uh, factors that indicate uh, it's really hard for Japanese people. Uh, also, due to uh, aging society, um, aging, uh, aging population, um, we need to really uh, change and improve our Japanese financial literacy. So what we do is um, we we make it easy for people to invest in real estate. So uh, we just launched last year. Um, so most of the people invest in our platform, they, never, uh, they had never invested in real estate or REITs or any real estate related products, but we made it easy. Um, the, uh, the idea is that we can help them to invest and they can contribute to society, a local revitalization. For example, we, uh, we keep the, uh, the old traditional buildings in Kyoto, for example, to renovate and convert it into a hostel, uh, hotels, um, so that keep the uh, scenery of beautiful Kyoto, and also they can get financial returns. Um, so it's it's nearly close to a social impact investment, but at the same time they can improve investment literacy in Japan. So that's what I do. Um, so 
Um, let me know if you have any questions about Japan or you know travel tips, uh, finance, <laughs> crypto, blockchain, um, anything happening in Japan. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, welcome everybody here. Uh, thanks for having the opportunity to also speak to you. Um, I'm the little one over there. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Susan, for the invitation to join you as the editor here for the Wealth Tech book. And uh, it's been a pretty amazing uh, journey uh, when I look back 10 years from now. Uh, in 2008, I had the opportunity to talk of on uh, to uh, one of the um, global heads of one of the of the biggest uh, wealth ma managers in the world, and uh, we talked about technology and uh, how it might change the the industry. And uh, he told me, well, if you can help me um, uh, to solve the problem that my client advisors sell more of my products. Then we can we can collaborate, and I said no, I can't help you with with that because this is your, your your job. But I could help you in designing technology that might help you to better face or or, or support your your clients' needs. And at that time, he didn't really believe in that. And if you look at that now, 10 years later, we created this wealth tech book, which re really shows what an amazing story at that time started 10 years ago and where we almost go now. Uh, so I think this is really a very good thing. So thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, contributing to, to, the, to this book. And uh, my job uh, is more on the research side. So I'm working at the uni university. We are doing research on fintech, wealth tech, and blockchain, but also uh, on the ed education side. So we are teaching the students. Um, but we also, and this is maybe a little bit newer, uh, try to um, enforce them and support them in creating their own startups in that field. Uh, and I think this is uh, also part of the story, uh, not to go to one of the large banks or the insurance companies, but to create their own startups and, and do their own thing. So um, I think this is very important for the future also. So this is my job. And uh, if you want to do something in that space, we can talk about that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katarina, I'm from Russia. Thank you, Susan, very much for inviting me for this project. Uh, so, um, what my article is about, uh, we in Russia have very much inefficiencies in the financial markets. So, we can implement tools that are common for a lot of markets. So, what uh, I am doing, I am building a robo-advisor uh, with a different approach. Uh, I build it like a portfolio of fintech applications uh, covering very different uh, areas, including medical areas. Uh, for example, uh, core application is financial planner and other uh, 18 applications covering, for example, government support programs. People want, uh, 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 we have very low financial literacy in Russia, and, uh, but have 150 programs, uh, uh, government support uh, programs. So uh, this uh, government support application can uh, advise people automatically uh, with what they need. So uh, they, they can't understand every 150 uh, programs, but with this application, one of 19s, it, uh, it, it, the, this person can get and optimize his or her financial wealth. So, and we have uh, 19 such application with the core one, as I said, as financial planner. Uh, and other one, for example, pre-diagnostics, including uh, um, pre-diagnostic pre medic medical application. Uh, and uh, people, again, with uh, these new development technologies, like artificial intelligence and so on, so on big data, um, uh, people don't, uh, don't understand what's happening with their uh, health. Uh, but with this application, pre-diagnostic applications, we can uh, decrease their uh, medical expenditures, expenditures, right? So, uh, so we have these applications uh, approach, 
portfolio applications approach, and uh, it uh, works like a fund of funds, right? So this is what about my article. <laughs> so uh, I'm doing something new, but uh, uh, when I uh, read your articles, they inspire me, inspire me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, to Germany. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, my name is Holger, Holger Boschke. I'm chairman of a, a consultancy firm that's based in Frankfurt, um, which is focusing on three uh, areas. That's digital banking, risk and regulatory, and transformation management. Uh, my article was about using artificial intelligence and wealth management. Um, obviously, I was trying to use the buzzword artificial intelligence, but uh, the truth is very often we're just really talking about intelligent systems and systems that, ca that can do a little bit more than the systems which we've been using in the past. Um, we are advising uh, clients in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Um, our biggest client actually is one of the bigger German banks who is not doing this well these days. <laughs> but in this area here, we are primarily focusing on uh, medium size and small banks um, that don't necessarily have the capacities to actually do all the stuff themselves, but they actually need to, and, and therefore looking to cooperate with um, fintechs, um, using them for uh, client relationship management purposes, for portfolio management services uh, and communication. And I was uh, writing about as to how they can possibly do it. Um, so we have a huge database, which is a little pitch I'm going to try to place here <laughs> as well. We have a huge database, like all the other consultancy firms, PwC, KPMG, uh, McKinsey. And um, we, we, we obviously have a lot of um, fintechs in that database. So if you, if you have something to offer to the German market, please let me know. Um, also, we are thinking about uh, making that database public so that other people can actually access it and use it. And so there might be um, a, a little fintech in its own right, uh, which we are currently thinking about. So if you're interested in that, have any views about that particular subject, please let me know. And uh, again, thanks to the two of you for organizing this great thing called the Wealth Tech Book. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, hi. Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you, Suzanne and Thomas. Uh, for me, it's a great opportunity to be part of the of the Wealth Tech Book because I'm a startup owner. Uh, my background is actually in in private equity. I worked for Lehman Brothers, and I realized over the years that uh, being a woman in in finance, <laughs> you know, it's it's quite it's quite rare. Uh, and also, I was good at earning money, not so good at investing my money. And that's why I realized, you know, women we actually manage like 75 percent of the spending worldwide but actually we have taken a backseat when it comes to when it comes to money so we earn 20 percent less than men we don't save enough and we don't invest enough so that's why when we reach retirement actually we have less money tha than men so there's a massive gap actually in wealth and that's what that's what I'm writing about in my in my article it's really how can we help women um, to you know get more money increase our salaries and and also understand this shift of wealth from from men to women and I think financial institutions are trying today to address women, uh, but it's it's quite difficult. So I've launched uh, my company is called Vespod, um, and what I do is financial education for women from everything from you know saving, investing, cryptocurrencies, and, and blockchain. So what we want is basically more women investing money, uh, more women investors because that's you know good for the good for the economy. So I hope you know financial institutions are going to start to try building more products um, for women. Thank you very much. Hello to everyone, I'm Alessandro Bologna, I come from Italy and I'm an investment manager in the well management of a big international bank. 
Uh, I wrote uh, about uh, innovation and about a new business model. Schumpeter said uh, that innovation is to do something old in a new way. I wrote uh, about uh, a new way to do well management uh, through goal-based investing, uh, through engagement uh, and uh, through gam gamification. So if you want to speak about that, uh, I'm here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, I'm uh, Colin Bennett. Uh, I'm afraid I've got nothing to sell. I actually work for a, an asset manager. Uh, I'm actually an incumbent manager managing digital within uh, 1.6, um, uh, 160 billion asset manager. We've got global scale. I look after the websites, the marketing material, the reporting, all those type of things. So I've come actually from that side. Why did I want to write in the book? Well, I did a, an MIT FinTech course and the FinTech book was actually the, the primary material to actually read. So I thought, wouldn't it be good to actually be in there? And I surprised myself and I got in there. So what I wrote about was one of the um, challenges that I have every day and I know my colleagues have and I know other people within the industry have and that's the distribution of marketing material. The sort of friction-free um, applications, the friction-free um, digital side of things actually stops as soon as you hit some sort of marketing material. And if you look at the applications that are out there, you actually can get your charts, you can get your graphs, but is it delivered in a compliant way? Is everything right? Have you actually got everything for a professional, a retail, is MIFID II compliant? All those type of things. You can't actually hit that unless you have the metadata right and you have the basics right behind those, um, those, that material. Sounds really boring, but it's kind of really, really actually <laughs> It is actually the, the key to unlock quite a lot of the, um, the wealth tech that will happen in the future because you, can't, you can do all this stuff, you can do it on the chain, you can do it on a token, you can do it on a coin, but if you can't actually distribute the right material in a compliant way, you're dead in the water, you can't do any more. And if you look at it, you actually get those sort of examples where you actually have to find the client services team or someone and it always breaks that chain and uh, I wanted to actually raise this so that people actually start thinking about it and I don't have to sit in meetings for the next three years describing the challenges that I have to actually face that the world actually starts understanding around the marketing material pieces. My background itself, I've actually worked at GAM for 20 years. I've worked at um, the chairman's office looking after IT, looking after infrastructure, development, change. I've tried to bring all those things together um, with my passion for wealth tech, and that's kind of where, where I am. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. My name is Sandro Schmidt. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Excel. We are actually a top five fintech in EU and also Switzerland. And what are we doing? We are um, quant engineers, so we are working in the asset and risk management space using their econometrics, mathematics, quant finance, stochastic statistics. You can also call it artificial intelligence or machine learning, which is just statistics. And we build in there then the engines. Um, we also just been uh, announced for the venture leaders in Switzerland going to New York and also won last year at Digital Switzerland. Beside this, I'm also the president of the Swiss Risk Association. So whenever you have something to say about risk in Switzerland, just drop me a line and I'm happy to organize something for you. We have meanwhile, um, I would say it's by far the biggest association in Switzerland, risk. Prior to this venture, I used to be a CEO, CRO and COO of different banks in Switzerland and abroad, and also did consulting as a partner in Deloitte and KPMG. Thank you, hope to see you later. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Dryle. I've come all the way from Toronto, Canada, as you've all heard. Uh, if you're checking the signatures in the book, Steve is spelled with a dollar sign. So <laughs> that way you know who that is. Uh, as far as the stuff, or what, well, my contribution to the book was uh, asset-based cryptocurrencies defined. So I basically uh, gave a high-level overview of essentially what's required when you're trying to deploy an asset-based cryptocurrency and what's involved with all those things and all things to factor in. I I'm, I'm also have a thing in the uh, FinTech Circle Institute as well, that's uh, cryptocurrency, is a cryptocurrency deployment fundamentals, which is basically gives you an overview of if you want to deploy a cryptocurrency, that's the stuff you need to know. Um, 
projects that I'm working at, well, my main thing is obviously cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Oh, well, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, pick an order. Um, everything crypto, everything blockchain, it's all good stuff and good times. Uh, latest project I'm working on, I'm one of the founding directors of a company called Nikola Tesla Unite. Uh, we've spun out essentially what would be described as the official cryptocurrency for Nikola Tesla. Uh, and in doing that, we're building out an entire economy, and that's kind of the define, I guess, describes what it is I do. I build cryptocurrency based economies. If you're curious to know what that means or what that involves or if that's something that it interests you, I would love to chat. I love talking about cryptocurrency in all shapes and forms, and I probably have a unique perspective that you haven't heard before. I would love to talk to anybody who comes from the other side, basically, um, see if we can talk about how to merge those two worlds because there's a lot of friction getting them together, and it can be done, so figure out how to do it and change things. Super disruptive. It's good times. So come chat. Thanks. <laughs> Let's not try, try to stay in the light. Hi, my name is Angelique Schouten, and uh, I used to live in London, but have moved back to the Netherlands, where our head office is. And I work at Open, and Open developed a core banking engine from scratch, because we were too frustrated with all the old crap that was available there. So we power asset management, insurance companies, wealth managers, and we take care always of the boring stuff. It just has to work, and that's what the article is about. We see a lot of companies focusing on these flashy new apps, and I call that putting lipstick on the pig. It's still a pig. So the article shows you some tangible results, what you can achieve with replacing your entire architecture by a di digital architecture. So come see me if you need help. Thanks. Thank you. Like uh, Angelique, I'm working at uh, Open as well. Um, I have a background in uh, management uh, consulting at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. And um, after a couple of years, um, I arrived at a crossroads, basically. Um, do I only want to um, tell companies what to do, give them advice, or do I want to uh, be involved in actually doing and building a company? Um, that's what I'm doing at Open. Um, I'm uh, working working heavily on the international expansion uh, of Open. Um, if with a particular interest in Europe, so if you're based in Germany particular or France, um, I'd be happy to uh, talk to you about it. Thank you. Sorry, take the long way around. Um, hi, my name's Pete Stevens. Uh, I work for UBS. I lead the uh, UBS's research and development into blockchain and distributed ledger technology, uh, based at level 39 in Canary Wharf. So I haven't travelled quite as far as most people here. Um, I previously was based a little further away, out in Hong Kong, for almost 10 years, where I was our CTO uh, for Asia Pacific. So my specific interest uh, is really how you can use emerging technologies to develop new business models, particularly in financial services across the various businesses that UBS operates. Um, so we have a specialization in the blockchain area for whatever that actually means as a, as a very high level word. Also, I'm very interested in how you can sort of reimagine uh, the world of compliance uh, and, and regulation. Uh, because I see that as a huge friction point that, while there's a lot of buzz around it, we're still struggling to see anything tangible come out of it. Um, so I would love to offer to sort of chat to people later on, uh, but I, unfortunately, am the one who's going to be going straight to the airport in about five minutes uh, to go to Zurich, unfortunately. So uh, thanks very much, but do feel free to contact me uh, if, if that's of interest. Thanks very much. Um, afternoon. I'll uh, try and keep this short and sweet. I'm Byron Levine, bringing uh, another country to the mix. I'm originally from South Africa. Um, I've been in London for about eight years, and I work in business development and strategy for a company called SEI Investments. Um, my particular interest in this area is looking at how wealth management firms can leverage new technology to sort of future-proof themselves with the multitude of changes happening in the industry. Um, I have a particular interest in financial inclusion and financial literacy, so would be more than happy to talk to anyone about that later on. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Frank. I'm founder and CEO of Nets. Um, Nets, we are a lead generation platform in the financial services space. Um, we're one of the few platforms in Europe who's actually GDPR compliant. And the work we do is all about um, personalized, more targeted, um, more effective and also more cost efficient um, business development, marketing and lead generation for financial services. Uh, that being wealth managers, uh, venture capital funds, institutional funds, fintech startups, fintech scale-ups, fintech companies, um, we can do it all. And um, we're uh, operating on a global level now. We started here in the UK. Um, I'm coming very far from King's Cross here in London. Um, and if you guys want to talk about, oh sorry, um, my contribution to the Wealth Tech book is actually all about um, more personalized selling, uh, more personalized uh, client acquisition, um, and getting rid of the old boiler room techniques and um, Wolf of Wall Street sort of approaches of just calling up clients, calling through the phone book um, and basically forcing um, any old investment product down their throat. Um, these times are over and we're uh, in the business to change that. Um, if you want to talk to me about lead generation marketing later on or about Oktoberfest, I'm from Munich originally, or, or about the uh, uh, abysmal performance of Germany at the World Cup in football, um, I'd love to talk to you. So thanks very much. Hello everybody, my name is Jeffrey Miller. I'm here with the Roman team. I'm a co-founder of Two for Capital. Uh, Two for Capital is a research and technology driven asset manager based in Zurich, Switzerland. We are a small team of uh, natural scientists by education, physics, math, chemistry. And uh, uh, so why are we here? Uh, before founding our own company, uh, we were working uh, 10 years at the uh, main group, which is a hedge fund headquartered quite close from here. And during that time, we have uh, time and again uh, seen and learned how some of the most successful uh, hedge funds have used a lot of technology, not only to be more efficient, but uh, most importantly, to make better decisions. And that uh, has really inspired us. And for us, it kind of became clear that the same uh, reality would also become uh, the case in the traditional investment world. And we had a vision that uh, in the future, a significant part of investment decisions would be taken in a systematic way, detached from traditional frameworks. And today, our company, the mission is uh, to provide uh, sophisticated rule-based investment solutions for banks, institutional investors, and also private investors. And that means our solutions, they neither need a CIO, nor a stock analyst, nor a portfolio manager, nor a risk manager. Uh, everything is completely systematic and digitized. So we have solid solutions uh, with very, very low production costs. And uh, such solutions and technologies um, obviously are ideally suited for banks. However, we find it particularly difficult to get bank CIOs or CEOs on board, even though uh, in the meantime, we manage and advise close to three billion Swiss francs and we work together with companies like BlackRock. And of course, there are many reasons. The change is very hard and uh, uh, banks should also not be too innovative. Um, but uh, the opportunity to evangelize on this new technology and approach in this wealth tech book for us was just too good to be missed. And uh, Roman or I are happy to talk to everybody who is interested in this new approach or has ideas for collaborations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Laura. I'm from Germany, Cologne, and I'm uh, working as a management consultant for Arcadia Management Consultants. We have our office in Cologne next to the Rhine. Very nice. And uh, we have a focus in the financial industry as well. And especially we are focusing on uh, process automation and digitalization. And um, yes, we are very interested in the wealth management sector as well. And I think I know both sides because when I started working, I uh, started at a um, wealth manager in uh, Cologne. And uh, yeah, now I'm on the other side uh, as a consultant. So um, for me, it's very interesting to see um, 
both sides. And as I'm from the Generation Y, um, I wrote an article about matching generations because um, I think um, the wealth managers need a new digital business model so that they are um, so that they can um, match generations. Like uh, um, the grandfather has other needs than the grandson, and uh, yeah, that's uh, what it's all about uh, to change it. Uh, in the future and today. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Eleftheris Jerry Floros. I'm the founder and CEO of MoneyDrome Edge. MoneyDrome Edge is a multi-chain investment platform powered by artificial intelligence, machine learning, and analytics. Our mission is to simplify investing and to democratize wealth. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Suzanne Chisti, uh, Mr. Thomas Pushman, uh, for giving us co-authors the opportunity to write interesting articles in the WealthTech book, I've read some of them, not all of them, but there have been some real fantastic articles about uh, different subjects uh, of uh, wealth management and I found them very interesting. Um, apart from being an entrepreneur, I'm also an author. I write uh, articles about financial technology, I write about cryptocurrencies, blockchain. Uh, I publish them usually on Medium and on Media Mogul. Uh, the market mogul, excuse me, and uh, the market mogul is uh, very interesting because it has a wide reach and a, a great uh, audience. Uh, I'm Greek. I was uh, my mother is Swedish, so I'm Greek Swedish. I was born in Belgium, lived in the U.S., lived in Hamburg, Germany, and now I live in London. And I just took the train, the Southeastern Express from Greenwich, to come over here. It's a pleasure meeting you, and I'd like to uh, thank uh, Susanna Chissi once again for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. So good afternoon to everybody. So my name is Yvon Moison. I'm from Paris, France. And uh, I have two positions. First, um, the, I'm professor in digital marketing at YESSEG. It's a top 20 uh, business school uh, uh, in France. And um, so there I'm teaching, um, I'm teaching fintech and digital banking and also research uh, with major banks and insurers in France. And um, we are also focusing on uh, uh, specific uh, activities for fintech, like for example, to develop their app uh, or to develop their digital strategies, uh, mainly with my students that are more, much more cheaper than consulting company and do a good job too. And uh, I'm also uh, the CEO of a consulting company and this case is much more expensive. Um, so um, I can uh, I can uh, I can help you to design your overall uh, strategy in uh, digital banking and fintech. Thank you very much. Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Shashi and. Uh, I hold a British passport and I live in London and work in London, but uh, in the spirit of multiculturalism, uh, tick me off as Indian because I'm equally Indian. So that's one more country in the list. Um, so WealthTech uh, is at the confluence of two macro uh, trends that we see in the world today. One is of course that uh, everyone's getting wealthier and there's a lot more assets to manage. And the second is that uh, digital is commoditizing access to a lot more people. And uh, uh, wealth tech is exactly in the middle of these two very large macroeconomic trends. So the article that me and a co-author who sadly couldn't be here today have written is about how do you balance personal and digital. And that's quite relevant to the wealth management space. Uh, because uh, that's one space where I don't believe personally it will be entirely uh, technology. There will be a good uh, balance between technology and the personal uh, advice that will be required for uh, customers. And I focus, we focus primarily on the distribution side of uh, wealth management. 
coming to me as a person and as a professional i wrote this article when uh, i was the head of digital for uh, citibank in emia since then uh, i have become a partner in a venture investment firm so uh, we invest money in uh, emerging technology firms uh, not just fintech uh, so we have invested in uh, a payment systems company we've invested in a video analytics tagging company uh, and lots other such investments uh, i also am doing uh, digital advisory and i still have spare time so anyone interested in uh, advisory ned mentoring advisory uh, uh, mentoring or any other sort of uh, advice uh, uh, i'm one linkedin message away thank you Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Clive Loanyu. Together with uh, Richard Beats, I uh, wrote the uh, chapter in the World Tech book about cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity, uh, uh, in the chap uh, chapter, we explain how cybersecurity adds to uh, the trust uh, for uh, World Tech companies using, um, uh, using World Tech solutions. And, um, and how, how we do this with cybersecurity, uh, our advice. Um, we have recently uh, launched a, um, a, a new product, which I'm proud of. Um, a, a question for the, for the audience. Uh, how many, what is the percentage uh, of the phishing links that are being clicked? Sorry, yeah, it's forty percent. <laughs> if you if you add that to the number of uh, uh, hacks that are caused by phishing links, uh, you can imagine it's a huge risk. Eighty-five percent of the hacks is being caused by phishing links. Uh, we uh, jumped into this uh, uh, yeah, opportunity and uh, developed uh, protection against this risk, against phishing. Uh, how do we uh, compare ourselves to others? Uh, we leverage the awareness of uh, people that receive uh, links. Uh, we uh, do not check whether a link is malicious, but we uh, warn the people and give them educational message of, hey, watch it, and uh, this is uh, the way you should go forward in the situation. If you like to be protected for against phishing, please uh, contact me. Thank you so much. Afternoon, everybody. It's that strange guy with a very flowery shirt. What on earth could he talk about? For those who think he also speaks with a strange English accent, this is Scottish. So it's another country, Suzanne, that you can chalk up, for we are a distinct country. Especially when it comes to the Football World Cup. We're definitely a distinct <laughs> country. Um, my name is JB. It has been 13 hours since I last said the words AI. I'm a reformed technologist. For those who know the Hitchhiker, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, to describe myself as a technologist would be akin to Arthur Dent describing himself as an astronaut. My journey in technology was accidental. I did not ask for technology. I dare say technology did not ask for me. And yet somehow we found each other. And we found ourselves in this crossing point of wealth management, in asset management. And it's with great gratitude, both to Suzanne and Thomas, for inviting me to be part of this book with you. The sense of family, the sense that we have as a family pulled together this fantastic book to try and describe what up until now has been the indescribable. For me, for my small part, it's quite simple. I try to describe what I've done for 20 years, which is to select professional fund managers 
to try and understand the good, the bad, and the ugly, and try to make better outcomes for customers. I realized as the world becomes ever more complex, that job was becoming ever more impossible. And therefore, I had to open up myself to the potential and the possibilities that technology could actually find new solutions to that. So it's, again, with my pleasure that I do also two lectures for FinTech Circle Institute. One is on uh, artificial intelligence robo fund selection, which is in the same theme to the, the chapter in the book. The other is the uh, ETF 2.0, exchange traded funds. What happens if we take an exchange traded fund, take the rule book, set it on fire and start again. And we start again with block architecture combined with artificial intelligence. What could we actually possibly do? I'm sensing a very good conversation with this Canadian right here. Um, because the notion of mutual funds have actually even changed in 50 years. What we did as an industry, we said, well, we'll sweep up thousands of investors together and we'll all put them in one structure and tell them that that's, that's as good as it's going to get for them. Thanks very much. I think with block architecture combined with machine learning, we can actually deliver individual pathways, individual outcomes for investors inside block, owned by themselves, compress that value chain, get rid of those intermediaries, but map and match those cash flows from now into retirement. After all, is this not what the WellTech book is all about? Taking the concept of technology, rolling it forward, asking what the possible could be, and ultimately deliver better outcomes. If you are interested in that like I am, then come speak to the crazy Scottish guy with the flowery shirt. <laughs> Thank you. JD. That's going to be really, really challenging, actually. How do, how do I beat that one? Anyway, well, well done, well done, JD. So, um, good afternoon, everybody. My name's um, Jeremy Sosabowski from um, Algo Dynamics. I commuted all the way from uh, Cambridge today, Cambridge, UK. So a bit of a bit of a traitor here. Um, I was born in France. My parents are Polish, uh, and I've lived in six different countries. So yeah, welcome to fintech. So and Suzanne, well done again for doing this. Um, Company, um, what we do, and and you know, there's been a lot of AI, a lot of talking about risk and blockchain. Well done, everybody. Um, we're focusing very specifically on market risk. So uh, occasionally, you know, you build your portfolio, you look at historical data, everything else, and then stuff happens. You get some big macro shock, or you get some big macro event, and all that robo advisory and everything else. Well done, everybody, but it just stops working. And that's the painful truth about tail risk. It's uh, it's painful and it's tail. So that's what we do. So that's what we do. Um, our speciality is is tail risk forecasting, and that's what we do. So uh, client base is on the asset management side and uh, investment banking front office. I know there are a few asset managers in the room, so would love to talk to you. I'll be around, and Brian's also there at the back, so he's uh, going to say hello. Um, I'm not going to take up more of your time because I think it's going to be more interesting talking to everybody here and all the guests. So uh, thank you very much. It's Jeremy from uh, Algo Dynamics. Thank you. Right. Dean. Go, Dean. Well done, thank well you, done. Jeremy. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dean Demelwick, and I'm really glad that I'm part of this uh, great uh, book launch, which is really innovative, uh, actually not only in a book, but how we actually participate in it. And what I've written, actually, is I've written about the blockchain. So I think this, is, this book is actually a line of decentralized uh, uh, and distributed um, knowledge. So we can actually connect that with uh, blockchain. But uh, uh, to say uh, about my article, it's about actually how, actually, um, how uh, uh, blockchain uh, contributes or how bring uh, innovation, how brings innovation in uh, asset managers, and uh, the the couple of uh, couple of pages that I've written actually, uh, uh, that was last year when I was in London. Now actually I live uh, and breathe in Paris, but uh, it's good that I'm back here and to see this uh, fintech community in London, which is growing, 
and uh, the blockchain community is growing and it's really great to be part uh, of this uh, uh, great community. Uh, in the book, uh, I think uh, you all uh, uh, read the, the, the book, uh, I've written about uh, our actually uh, blockchain projects. I'm working in BNP Paribas. Uh, we've got very cool projects which is called uh, Planet Funds. Uh, please uh, go and research it and you will see, I think, uh, the, how our team uh, mixed uh, all latest technologies, which means uh, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence and big data to actually uh, streamline the, the, the asset managers actually uh, distribution uh, on blockchain distribu fund distribution on blockchain and on the buy side actually to help uh, buyers to uh, actually uh, streamline the process of buying the funds uh, and not only that actually they can actually go uh, and actually uh, search the funds and uh, uh, investors search uh, asset managers can refine so this is the in short actually uh, uh, our, our small our projects and it's going to be uh, in production at the end of the year. So this is all for me. Thank you very much one more time. Thank you. Sorry, I was, wait I was waiting for you guys to step up. Good evening, everyone. I, th I think I'm. Well, you, 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 need, you more than spoiled my party. I think I, I was about to say I'm, I'm the, the token Belgian of the evening, but I think you were born there. So, um, although I'm, I'm living in London, so I could count as a Londoner. Um, where do I start? Ten years. Well, 2009, I, I left my job at Merrill Lynch to start a, a European challenger bank, something which is um, a lot more commonplace here in here in the UK. Um, if I look back at the last nine years, almost ten years. Um, We've got a bank that's active in, in two countries, uh, soon three, um, two and a half billion of deposits and, and a billion of, of assets uh, raised from uh, from retail clients. So it's a B2C business. Uh, you've given me a very easy job to do, which was to uh, explain what we've done recently in, in launching our, our Belgian bank uh, four years ago. Uh, so that, that was probably the easiest chapter for me to, to write. Thank you very much for that. Um, the interesting part, and in, in, I think in, in building this, um, this business is that we've we've built a number of technologies ourselves. Uh, we've um, we've teamed up with a lot of technology companies or, or financial markets companies. Uh, we've experienced the, um, the the frustrations of the, uh, the the core banking system. So love to talk to open about that. Um, but but we've really teamed up with a lot of different uh, tech and fintech companies as well. So um, I wouldn't call us a platform bank by any by any means. But but we're we're hopefully evolving towards towards that. Um, Lastly, when I launched the bank in, in Belgium in 2014, um, the local press wasn't really aware of what fintech was, so we decided to, to start uh, Fintech Belgium, the local federation there, so uh, a lot smaller than, than your regional uh, fintech association in, in, in China. We we're only 11 million people in Belgium, but uh, we'd love to talk to, 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 to you. Uh, we'd love to talk to, to all of you. We organize a, a, a fintech summit there once a year in, in Brussels, um, so we yeah, would love to have some of you um, speak there. Thank you very much. Speak to you later. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gabriela Kindert. It's my pleasure to be here uh, today and thank you for the opportunity. I think it's a great initiative that you have done with the book and uh, I'm super thankful. I'm not going to add to the diversity of uh, nations here because I shared the nationality with David uh, being Hungarian and with Angelic and some others being Dutch. Um, my background is in banking uh, and asset management and um, I have spent over 20 years in trying to enable institutional investors to gain access to alternative assets, helping them to understand how they can build bridges, how they can invest in corporates, uh, leverage loans, uh, government-related loans, um, uh, on behalf of NNIP, BNP Paribas for these investments. And I'm also supervisory board member at Mizo Bank, uh, actually, so I have some uh, background in uh, still in banking. 
And when I saw all these uh, fantastic platforms appearing, um, uh, the alternative lending platforms, there was one question I had in mind. A couple of questions. But the most important question, which will survive? What are the elements contributing to their survival? And how institutional investors can gain access to these companies? And that's my expertise, that's what I also wrote about. And if you want to understand about um, gaining access to alternative lending platforms, if you're an institutional investor, asset manager, and you want to understand how you can help your clients or yourself to gain access to institutional investors, lending in your platform, I'm the person to talk to. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Matilda, uh, this is Maya, We're, we work at HubX, uh, which was called uh, the Hub Exchange, but we've rebranded HubX. And uh, so our article is about how private advisors, investors and wealth managers can prepare for digital transformation. And what we believe is that is that's through platform technology and AI. So that ties in quite a bit with what we do at HubX. Yeah, so we're both in capitalism and global solutions for wealth and any other private financial professionals. Uh, so they can use our platform to be more efficient in what they're doing, manage and review it online, and also integrate to their client view. And we're backed by the LSC, you know, the London Thinker Sum Group. We've built their elite Schedule platform, and they've had on um, each of this year's company innovations. So if you want to hear about what, how we help businesses or anything, we'll be happy to talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need two microphones. Um, hi, Richard Piers. I'm from Microsoft. Um, I work in our worldwide financial services uh, industry team. Um, been involved, uh, British from London, been involved in the fintech scene here as, as long as it's been around. Um, and I'm sort of notionally our retail private wealth uh, industry lead, which means that we're sort of dealing with the industry to try and understand the trends and issues and then connecting back to our engineering and the rest of our commercial business to make sure that it's relevant uh, for that industry. I also look after the core and open banking solutions, so I'd uh, love to talk to you there. Uh, recently, we've just been porting a lot of people like Temenos and Finastra onto to the cloud, so uh, there's room for many more. Um, and I also was involved with ClearBank at the beginning, the first payments clearing bank in the UK, uh, Redwood uh, Bank as well, who were a small bank in the UK. But um, wrote about digital superpowers, so that was all to do with artificial intelligence. Um, uh, but what I'm really interested in at the minute, if you were to ask me for my next chapter, there we are, let's just leave it with an optimistic what's happening in the next book, uh, is sustainable finance. Uh, so really interested in obviously the impact that financial services industry and technology uh, can have on uh, affecting positively affecting climate change. Um, and I talk now about the, the field to fork uh, industry in, in food, where people are obviously very conscious about where their food comes from, and I think we should be thinking about maybe from mine to market. Uh, where is it coming out of the ground as a commodity? How is it being tracked and traced all the way through to being uh, put into your portfolio and sold to you uh, through your various uh, uh, buy-side platforms? So there we go, that's me. Thank you very much, Richard. I think, have you got everybody, is anybody whom we missed? No, I think everybody spoke now. Um, what I would like to do is now is Noel, is he in the room? Yes, Noel, can we get the video uh, set up? Because I want to show you a video which we have prepared for all of you uh, tonight. Uh, and then I also would like just to thank all my team members here. And we've got Noel, of course, our marketing manager, whom you have known already probably online. Um, no Noel, do you want to say a few words? Well, yes, uh, this is unexpected, but it's been great to, uh, to see you all and hear you all at last. You know, two years of uh, collaboration and we're all in the same room as each other. It's, uh, it's going to be a fantastic day, so thank you very much.
Cheers. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Noel. And we have got uh, Dimitri here on the side, part of our FinTech Circle team. We have got Leah just taking a photo. She's live tweeting from our Wealthic Book account. We have got Palvi, but I think she's outside. We have got Leah Rosenthal here, also live reporting on Instagram today. Next to her, we've got Elizabeth, who also is here helping us with all our, our reporting and, uh, and team team management reception uh, and helping us organize. And I don't know if we've got, um, I think Palvi is outside, but we've got the whole team here with you. And of course, Dishard, our video team, and all everything is being live streamed tonight as well. And everything has been recorded. So the whole afternoon will be put afterwards. We share that with all of you and all the photos as well on uh, online so that you can use them, you know, for your own social media. And now let's show you a video. Almost a video we are dedicated to all of you, uh, and I love the music. You know the Hall of Fame, so you're all in the Hall of Fame now, uh, and we will show that as well tonight. And um, one thing as well, I wanted to invite you to, in basically not for yourself, but for friends of you, you know, colleagues who buy the book to write reviews online, you know, on Amazon, wherever online where you get those books. Um, because any review, of course, testimonials are really important for us, but we as authors, we're not allowed to, obviously, because there's a conflict of interest, you know, so we can't leave our own reviews. But if you uh, have got, you know, people who buy the book, please, invite them to do leave reviews that we get lots of five star reviews hopefully but even if they are not five it doesn't matter it's kind of honest you know feedback you know on online is really important and with that i think now i would like you all to come outside to the main reception we've got wine waiting for you beer uh, something to drink and to have a nice chat before our guests come. And our guests come at six o'clock. As you know, they come from six o'clock onwards. And then we start with the official book launch when everybody is here. And then at the end of the day, everybody gets a signed copy of the book. So that's for each of you, you know, you get all a signed copy of the Wealthstick book and all our guests get a signed copy as well of the book. So that's what we plan for the whole night. It's really a day full of celebration. So thanks all for coming and let's join us now for having a drink outside before everybody else joins us. Mm -hmm.